Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Voss, Editor-in-Chief of Disability Media, and I'm here with you once again to read you one of our articles. And it is an op-ed that I wrote earlier today, and it's titled, If Ecuador Withdraws Support and Protection from Julian Assange, It Will Be a Tragedy. And I mean a, a tragedy for a lot more people than just Assange. If the government of Ecuador withdraws its protection of Julian Assange by its continued jamming of his internet and phone access, or through the ending of his asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, it will not only harm the life of Julian Assange, it will have an impact on journalism of global proportions. Uh, Julian Assange has always stood up for those who are attacked by overt and covert actions of government, the military industrial apparatus, and the lies of the corporate press. From standing up to Twitter's persecution of, act of individual activists like Lori Love, to exposing the crimes and the war crimes of an entire nation-state apparatus via the publication of the Iraq war logs and collateral murder, Julian Assange has consistently, consistently over a very long period, acted to protect the powerless from persecution. And I cannot emphasize that enough, that from individual people and individual sources to entire, you know, groups of people from Catalonia to Iraq to Afghanistan, Assange has always stood up for those who are persecuted. And that is, a, you know, being a help to the powerless is a huge reason to support him. So, earlier today, news.com.au revealed that Assange's internet access had not simply been cut, but is being actively physically jammed by handheld devices used by embassy staff. All this against a citizen of Ecuador. WikiLeaks and others have noted that this repression of Assange's ability to speak out is contrary to the Constitution of Ecuador, and that his breach represents a transgression against Assange's human rights, uh, and that is not in question. And I want to add right, uh, here that I think that it is, and I, I wish I had included this in the article, that I think it's a very, very um, sad state that uh, Ecuador is putting its embassy staff in a situation where they have to jam the internet personally with handheld devices um, uh, and uh, impose that that type of sanctioning against a citizen of Ecuador that is living in an embassy with you know and sort of in contact with them day in and day out uh, in their workspace so I think that um, having them physically jam his internet access and his phone access and all of that with handheld jammers like that puts the Ecuadorian embassy staff in a very, very tricky, um, emotionally fraught situation that I think is wrong, not just for Assange, but also for the embassy staff. The impact that his ongoing detention and isolation will have on the rest of the planet has not sufficiently been discussed by any media outlet thus far. A brilliant comment left in the response to a previous Disobedient Media article, which was uh, posted on Steemit, and I replied to one of the Steemit commenters saying, I will quote you in the, in the article, and I did. So um, I don't know if the Steemit uh, uh, viewer is listening to this video or if they saw the comment back or reading the article, but I really appreciated their comment. It was brilliant. Um, and it reminded of a, uh, it, they referenced a Mr. Fish cartoon published in Harper's in 2011, and Harper's conveniently has since removed the image from its site, but the cartoon was retrieved with the help of archive services. And the image reads, Wanted for peddling pornography of naked emperors banging the absolute hell out of Lady Justice. And uh, the image is in the article, and it is just of Assange's face It's a, as a wanted poster. And uh, you can see that if you click on the link in the descri description of this video. But uh, though the days of faux left-wing media's praise of Assange and WikiLeaks has long since gone, Assange's support for the public's right to know for transparency and his efforts to shine a light on the corruption behind closed doors of government have never wavered. As the list of powerful enemies of WikiLeaks has grown, the crowd of mainstream journalists willing to speak out on behalf of Assange has become shorter by the year. This is in part thanks to the whole of government attempts to destroy WikiLeaks, described very well in uh, Caitlin, Caitlin John, no, Caitlin Johnston, sorry. The whole of government attempts to destroy WikiLeaks was described very, very well in Susie Dawson's uh, article, Being Julian Assange and uh, I will link to that also in the in the description of this video uh, but but yeah the fact that that entire government or entire agencies uh, like the CIA have been devoted to destroying WikiLeaks is absolutely relevant to the loss of their support and and the crafting of narratives that have contributed to the loss of support for WikiLeaks and Assange and and also through um, tangible attacks and attacks on the character of the WikiLeaks editor-in-chief so for that reason uh, Ecuador's support 
has uh, for Assange is more critical now than it ever has been. At the beginning of Assange's stay in the embassy, he was vis visited by many well-known public figures who would stand for his life to be protected. And again, you know, people like Michael Moore, who stood with him at that time and then and now have abandoned him, is really, really sad. And it's not it's not at all fair. And and I said this in a very recent decipher you stream uh, with Susie Dawson. Who, who is amazing and you should definitely read her article on Assange, but we, we, we collaborate in a, a journalistic initiative called Decipher You. And this, uh, this evening, as we went through that, um, some, some more NSA documents uh, leaked by Edward Snowden, we found some really, really um, saddening documentation of the US's interference in Iraq. And so uh, we really took a moment during the episode to thank, thank Assange and to thank uh, for his work in uncovering U.S. war crimes, and Edward Snowden for publishing the NSA, uh, the Sid Today documents, etc., and uh, it was really, really a heavy moment knowing that Assange was in this is is in the embassy, uh, unable to talk to his family, unable to receive phone calls, unable to receive visitors other than his lawyers, unable to con uh, contact the outside world through the internet, and unable to take phone calls. And, and, you know, and seeing this evidence of war crimes or, you know, that, that WikiLeaks has published in addition to the information that we read about Snowden and Decipher, uh, from Snowden in the Decipher uh, series, it was a really, really, you know, saddening, gut-wrenching type of a, a moment. We all, like everybody viewing, uh, Susie and I both felt really, really, you know, it was a heavy uh, segment. It was a heavy, heavy episode. And I think the the point that really was driven home to me as we went through those documents was that Assange and Snowden and everybody who um, publishes and exposes these crimes, they are the ones that are punished. The people that are, that are perpetrating the war crimes and that are perpetrating the most egregious forms of evil known to man are heralded as moral and upright citizens who we should celebrate being our dictators, like Hillary Clinton, Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, and the rest. And so to see people like Assange and Edward Snowden pilloried in the public, in the public view, and just destroyed, their character just raked over coals and, and truly punished in every way imaginable because they did the right thing and they gave up their lives to bring us the truth is the most disgusting, saddening thing to me. And I really, really hope that Ecuador does um, let Assange both have his freedom to speak his mind and I hope that they can get him safely to that to their country, which he is now a citizen of, so that he can live his life in whatever type of freedom he is able to have while he is the most wanted man alive for the CIA. And that is what it is. And sorry I'm ranting off the cuff, but this just really, really, really is a disturbing, disgusting period in, in, in the history of humanity when we are allowing not just Assange, but all truth tellers to be punished like this. It's absolutely a reversal of everything that the public should be fighting for. Because when we fight for Assange or Snowden, we are fighting for our own self-interest. Like, they are the ones that are helping us have the tools to fight back against our um, plutocracy. Anyway, um, so for that reason, and I'm going to start from the paragraph I was at uh, from the beginning, but I said, for that reason, Ecuador's support for Assange is more critical now than it ever has been. At the beginning of Assange's stay in the embassy, he was visited by many well-known public figures who were, would stand for his life to be protected. That group has sadly been shortened, both through the propagation of false media narratives about him and by unfortunate, untimely deaths. And that is really, really sad as well. Not just the propaganda, but the actual deaths that have happened in his close circle are very, very sad. So, if Assange continues to be isolated from the outside world, or in the worst case scenario, loses asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, the loss to investigative journalism will impact the entire planet. Corrupt journalists, uh, p corrupt politicians, warmongers, technocrats, and intelligence agencies will breathe, breathe a loud sigh of relief. The light that WikiLeaks shines on the corrupt plutocracy will be irrevocably dimmed. Powers and interests behind the architecture of global war will operate in secret without fear of exposure. You know, dangerously inept intelligence agencies, especially the CIA, would continue to operate outside the purview of public vision. We have, we would have lost an important public voice warning us of the dangers of artificial intelligence, as Caitlin has pointed out, uh, Caitlin Johnstone. 
uh, whistleblowers may be less likely to turn to, to somewhere that their anonymity will not be 100% secured and protected, as we have seen in WikiLeaks actions towards alleged sources such as Chelsea Manning. WikiLeaks protection and advocacy, outright strident advocacy on behalf of its sources is absolutely unmatched. And that is factually true. It is unmatched. The one only need witness the repeated failures of outlets such as The Intercept to protect its sources to understand the loss that would occur if WikiLeaks were to be unable to operate. What it, while Assange's arrest would not mean the end of WikiLeaks, and that, that is also true, as an organization, the loss of his leadership would inevitably represent a massive blow to the publisher. WikiLeaks has not only armed independent media with, its, with the ability to criticize the establishment, it has become the vanguard of what is possible for journalism, constantly pushing the boundaries as a publisher of last resort so that others can follow in its wake. In sharp contrast, the entire legacy press establishment seems to have abdicated its role as watchdogs of government instead of critiquing the government the media has become an extension of the state and the corporations whose interest the state serves. And that is why we don't see antitrust laws being used to break up the monopoly that is Amazon and or Google. Entire na or Facebook, I could go on forever. <laughs> uh, entire nations, whether in the Middle East or elsewhere, are attacked by the United States war machine with impunity. Without WikiLeaks exposure of war crimes and in the absence of Assange, how many of these acts will take place with little danger of being publicized by the mainstream press? Corrupt charities and foundations, cough the Clinton Foundation, mingle with politicians and powerful donors under the cover of darkness, or massacres go unnoticed. Sadistic psychopaths like Hillary Clinton would wear political crowns and mantles of virtue without question. Can you imagine if we hadn't seen the corruption behind the uh, lurking behind the uh, election of Hillary Clinton as a uh, Democratic nominee in 2016? Can you imagine if we hadn't known that for sure? We would all be called conspiracy theorists, and I guess we were already, we're, we are already called conspiracy theorists for stating the obvious, which is that the, um, the 2016 Democratic primary was rigged. So, but can you imagine if we didn't have the evidence to back that up? It would be staring us in the face very obviously, but we would be powerless to point out the evidence that it would be, that it was real. And that would make us, you know, that would totally sideline an entire section of the population that believed in Bernie Sanders, voted for him, and thought that he would really bring them a fairer country. And there would be nothing to say against that. And now, because of WikiLeaks, we know that that's what happened. So, and that, that and a thousand other things. You know, people wouldn't be able to prove that the Iraq war had, had contained how God knows how many war crimes. You know, it, the list goes on and on and on. And that's why WikiLeaks and Assange are so important. But, and especially when you think about somebody like Hillary Clinton being able to get away with those lies and crimes and corruption while acting like a a paragon of virtue it just that's what the press still still pe portrays her as cough the washington post but they can't get away with it because we can prove that she's a corrupt piece of shit so that that's how that is anyway uh the previous president of ecuador rafael carrera was and forgive me if i'm not pronouncing that correctly uh was extremely supportive of the asylum given to julian assange in the country's embassy in london correa's successor lenin moreno and again if i'm pronouncing that name incorrectly i apologize uh expressed support for assange during his election campaign and his government granted assange ecuadorian citizenship last december legacy media has pr attempted to portray lenin's support for assange as tepid at best even mr construing his frustration at the ongoing detention of Assange in the embassy as anger directed at Julian personally. And I mean, you really saw this. This was actually a real narrative that they tried to craft a few months ago. Um, I think it was basically uh, the media running scared and having to try to craft a narrative that Lenin hated uh, Assange when they found out that, that uh, Assange had gotten citizenship and diplomatic status from Ecuador. So they came out and said that Lenin uh, Moreno hated hated Assange because, for some reason, uh, but when uh, the actual truth behind that narrative was that Lenin expressed uh, frustration at the situation that Julian is in, and he wanted a resolution to it. So that got turned into he hates Assange. 
And I hope that people hearing this don't take my criticism and, you know, imploring Ecuador to uh, restore Julian's rights as me being, like, angry at them. I think that we need to appeal to the better nature of Ecuador and the Ecuadorian leadership. So... Uh, anyway, so Jimmy Dore recently uh, covered the situation regarding not only Julian Assange's lack of access to internet, phone calls and visitors, but also the political hypocrisy that has enabled the interests of the deep state to continually attack the publisher, sometimes with the consent ap or apathy of a public whose emotions are manipulated through the machinations of a hypocritical and corrupt media. Dore's entire segment is available below in the article, and you really, really should listen to it because I think he addresses very directly and very well the way in which all of our emotions have been so manipulated to hate Assange, and that also applies to people like Edward Snowden and other whistleblowers, you know, and to other um, really journalists full of integrity. So you see these narratives crafted very, very expertly to manipulate us to hate the people who are helping us the most. And that is so sad to me to see the people that are our truth tellers and are the champions of our interests get punished. And then they continue to champion our interests at no gain to themselves. And then they continue to get punished and the public is manipulated into not supporting them. It is the most tragic, tragic thing that I have ever really comprehended in my life. So with all that said... Um, I hope that even though this is a bit heavy and a bit rambly that you enjoyed this article and I hope you support WikiLeaks. Um, you know, I, I would rather you support WikiLeaks than my Patreon. So if you have one extra dollar a month to give, please give it to WikiLeaks and the Legal Defense Fund for Julian and, uh, you know, the Courage Foundation and all of the whistleblowers that they support. And uh, with that, I'll leave you uh, for this evening. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Voss. You can find me on Twitter at... Elizabeth L E A V O S. You can find Disobedient Media on Twitter at Disobedient News. I appreciate all of you listening and leaving your feedback. I love your comments. You're so wonderful. I have the best audience in the whole wide world, and I will see you next time, hopefully on a bit of a brighter subject. Thanks, guys.